Hi, this is Linda Noss, and this is video number 29 in the Ant vs. Man program. The, uh, the, we have a few more things we need to do. Uh, we have to keep a score, and we have to figure out how to do the interaction. So <clears throat> one of the things I'm going to put in first is the score. And the way we're going to put the score in is we're going to put in a number of lives for the player. So we have to go to player, and we have to add in another member variable or instance variable called lives. And then down here in the player constructor, we have to add in how many lives we want the player to have. Now I just picked two because when I'm testing it, I want the number to be fairly small. So I have to wait uh, all day to figure out if it's working or not. And then once we do those two things, we want to print the number of lives out on the screen so we know where we stand. So here we have down in the draw player method uh, a text box with the number of lives written in words and then we added on the variable and I placed that at 100 and 100. I probably won't leave it there but I just want to be able to see it quickly um, so that's what I'm going to do for lives. And so Essentially, when I run this thing, the number of lives is right here. It ends up right there, as you can see. Now, we can change the font, which we'll do later, and um, all that. So, Okay, so now that we've got the lives, we have to figure out what we want to do with them. Uh, right now, he has two lives. We have to figure out um, how to determine when he loses a life. So he loses a life in my game. He's going to lose a life when he, when an ant hits him. So the first thing we need to figure out is how to, to get that interaction going. And it's essentially just using the distance formula. Um, so in the ant method, we have all these different methods. And I have added at the end a distance formula. So basically I created a new method called distance and I'm bringing in a player because I want to know the distance between the ant and the player. And then I just use the distance formula. This is the distance formula that you've been using in your math class. It's the difference of the x's, so this is the x of the ant uh, minus the x of the player. And then I use the power function which is for squaring. So, um, and then you square that. And then I add the distance of the y. So this is the ant's y, and this is the player's y. And again, I'm using the power function to square that. And then we take the whole thing and put it in its own set of parentheses and, and surround it with the square root. So we're going to take the square root of the distance squared of the y's and the distance squared of the x's, which is the typical distance formula. So we have a new we have a new method called distance. Okay. Then we have to figure out when we're going to use this. So now that we've got this nice little method here, we have to figure out, okay, exactly when am I going to do this? So let's go back and figure out where we're going to put it in our ant program. So we have, we don't need that there. So we have all this neat stuff here. And then we're going to create an if statement down here when we draw the ants. Because this is basically here is where the ants go and how the ants change their position. So every time an ant changes its position, I want to know if the ant hits the player. So I'm going to put an if statement here. If Ants, and I have a whole list of ants, so I've got to do, I've got to check them all out. So I'm going to do my get i, so that will check out one ant at a time in my list, and then I want to do the distance. And my player's name is player. So basically, that does that. And then what do I want to do? Uh, player, well, okay. What do we put here? This is a, this has to be a conditional. So you have to use less than, greater than, equal to. So you have to figure out how far away your ant should be from the player to gain, um, to lose a life. So I'm just going to put in here less than um, or equal to 20. Okay. And 
You can change that number or make it different if you like. And then I'm going to actually tell the computer that the player is going to lose a life. Dot minus minus. Put a little space in there so you can see it easier. And then I'm going to change my text box. that then I gotta say well I want to put it right on top of where the old one was so basically I'm going to do that okay so that'll actually keep track of how many lies I have it should update the text box when I do it now I have to figure out what I'm going to do once the player runs out of lives and there's a lot of things you can do um, I'm just going to make the player disappear essentially and I'm going to tell using the text box that you've run out of lives. So basically, if the player dot lives equals zero, then I'm going to change where the player is situated. I'm going to put them off screen. So he's essentially going to disappear for us playing the game. And then I'm going to, in my text box, I'm just going to take this, copy it, put it up here, and I'm just going to say, instead of number of lives, I'm going to say, you have run out lives. Okay. So there we are. So I'm going to save this. It. You can see that happens here. And then if the player, let me get the player to run out of lives. Keep running away from him, not towards him. Okay, it should have gone down and it's not updating. So we have to figure out why it's not updating. The other thing I found too was because in my spray method I have this alpha value where the spray is disappearing, if um, it does that for text boxes, it, it, it actually takes this right here and it makes the text box disappear. So if I do this and run it, you'll see that the text box has disappeared. Let me run that one more time so you can see it. So in order for, to stop that from happening, I had to uh, comment out anything having to do with the, with the stroke. So I still want that there. So there we go. So now when I run it, it stays nice and strong. You can see it, okay, so it, I ran out of lives and put it there. So now we have to figure out how to make the old one disappear. Okay, so still a few little things we got to figure out, and maybe we can discuss those things as a class and figure out how to make um, the first one disappear when the second one appears on the text box. Um, and essentially that's it. And you can basically decide what you want to do with your... Um, player when he runs out of lives. The next video I'm going to talk about how to create your own font and, and we'll talk more about how to work with that text box. So see you next time. Bye-bye.